Good morning, Jobber Nation. Welcome to another episode of the Jobber Tears Podcast. As always, I'm Janelle from HR here with Sir and Mr. Black. The acoustic version of the Jobber Tears Podcast is live and in color with you guys this early ass morning if you are with us live. Um, yes, I kind of, I'm digging the whole like wrestling morning show because you know, ain't nobody doing that. <laughs> but good morning, all. Let's get into the chat. Um, this will be our last episode before WrestleMania. So we are here to talk, give our predictions, talk about a good old this week in wrestling. Um, but before we do get into it, we do have some church announcements. So first things first, WrestleMania weekend is upon us. Shout out to Dr. D in the building. WrestleMania weekend is upon us and where we will be hosting not one but two nights of wrestling, not only here in the city of Manhattan, but also in the city of Brotherly Love in Philadelphia. So we will be giving more information in regards to the Philadelphia locations um, in the early part of the week. But for night one um, here in New York, all the tri-state area can come on um, through to Playwright. Not Legends. Playwright will be for where night one is going to be. It's only a few blocks away from Legends. It's our sister location. So night one will be at Playwright Pub. So make sure to come out. Doors open at 5. Showtime at 7 p.m. Trips gave us an early start time. So make sure to do not be late. Um, well, a Facebook user, can you tell us your name before you give us some type of, you know, directions? <laughs> we like to know who you are. Um, and then night two, we will be back at Legends. Um, so make sure to come out and support the team here in the tri-state area. Um, but once again, we will be hosting not only here in New York, but also in the city of Philadelphia. So once again, that Philadelphia information will be provided at the top of the week to kick off WrestleMania week. Um, Cause hold up, wait a minute. <laughs> Y'all thought niggas was finished. Listen, you want the to camps today? the last no, we are one. We we are a family. Like a giant on the one fucking camera, okay? Um, so other than that, um, the month of April, independent wrestling is taking over. Um, shout out to Ashe Wrestling; they have their show coming up. Um, I believe April the nineteenth. Am I am I correct? Yeah. All right, and then so shout outs to the team out there in Charlotte, North Carolina, putting on for the city. Um, so once again, that will be that. Um, are you guys gonna be getting into this? <laughs> Listen, <laughs> I mean, did he did have did, did he did, no? He uh, his song was a was a, Listen, a mania song. If you yo, that was my first mania, and I cried. I legit when he performed because it was just so it was coming home. I was in my hometown city with my first WrestleMania, so emotional. But listen, until they figure out, until they want to reveal about what he did to Big, everything else is kind of like. <laughs> All right. Man, sex slaves, man, is out Shit here. Shit is wild. Wild. I can't. You know what it is for me. I can't really like take that. Take that. Take that. I, no, not don't take that. Take that. But no, diddy. I can't put. I can't put energy into niggas that got way more money in their bank account than me. So it's just like. Mm. Nah, it was. It was. It a, is. What it a is. Very interesting situation. Very interesting, to say the least. Absolutely. So, in terms of also speaking about what's going on in April, um, we are wrestling returns. Um, Friday, April the twenty sixth, I believe it's the Friday, um, the last Friday of the month where they are doing their tag team tournament. So, shout out to Pete Rosado and the team over there at We Are Wrestling. Um, so be on the lookout for their tag team tournament. Shout out to Prolific. In the tag team tournament. Shout outs to Survival of the Thickest. Oh, <laughs> I hear that. Shout outs to the rep coming back up north. I love them. Shout outs to Nate and the team and the rep. So it's going to be very interesting to see. Ooh, do oh, Doc Collar match. Okay, Anthony Gamble versus Lucas Chase. So make sure to support Pete and the team that we are wrestling that Friday night. And then we're going to end off the weekend at Battle Club Pro, our returning show, our first show of 2024, where we are having uh, champion versus champion, Yaya versus Cosmic. Uh, we also do have Brian, but ooh, that's my, that's my boo. When I saw him in Tampa, I bumped, yeah, I bumped into him in Tampa at that tailgate. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was with all he was with all the you know all the all the GCW guys. Um Brian Baum, Nikki Duke, AJ Slater, and a mystery um challenger. And then we have Darius Carter versus Ruthless Lala in a singles match. I believe it's the first time, or maybe once 
It um, hasn't been a long time. But then we have Mike Law versus Akira. Shout out to Akira, one of our trainers at Fallout versus Miss Gia Scott versus a mystery opponent. There are some mysteries going on. So make sure you got to come out to the show and live and in color to see what it is. Um, a must-see match for the five points title, Steve Pena versus Savannah Evans. I'm so glad to see Sis back up. Um, let's see how things go between Prince Ahmed versus Masha Slamovich. Shout out to Masha having her match with Shayna Baszler during WrestleMania weekend at Bloodsport. So make sure if you're in Philly that week to make sure to support that. And there we just announced this morning the survival of the fittest for the Fallout Shows of Championship with the champion Big Cuzzle going to get got some got some challenges here. You got Aaron Ash, Rayhan. Shout outs to Rayhan in the building. PB Smooth, yourself. Pretty Boy Smooth in the building, Chris Kaluta, and a mysterious a challenger as well. So we do have some, you know, surprises here and there. And oh, Find Jorge Santi versus Megan Bain. That this is going to be a banger. Um, so make sure. And if you have not noticed, all matches are intergender. So we are showing love to everybody, no matter who they are. Um, so we are definitely giving homage to that. So make sure to come out support. Tickets are on sale. Sponsorships are available. So you can hit me up personally if you guys are interested in sponsoring any of the matches or talent that you just saw. Um, we look forward to having everyone back. In Brooklyn on April the 28th for Let's Go. Um, other than that, did everyone do their homework assignment? Did everyone watch WrestleMania 4? I, I did. It. Did you watch it, I Mr. Black? Oh, because you know what? Because he called me. <laughs> he said, he said, hey. Because every time this one calls me, I think something's wrong. I think he's in trouble. So I always prepare myself for the worst, which is probably bad. But it's just like I want to make sure he's good. Mm -hmm. So when he called me, that's not like, oh, shit, something up. So he called me, but I was at work. So then I text him. I said, you good? Everything all right? I got to come help you. He said, yo, what's the resume? We got to watch. I forgot. I said, you're late. One, two, three, freak in the Number house. four. Freak nigga. So yeah. so, yeah. So last week we were talking about trilogies and we were talking about um, the fourth installment of, you know, certain um, franchises. If you have not seen the Bad Boys oh. trailer, woo, oh, it's okay. It's water. It'll draw off. If you have not seen the Bad Boys trailer, it is popping. Oh, I, I saw it. I saw it. I saw it yesterday. Listen, this one may be the resurgence of Will Smith's career on this one because it was really good. I mean, Will Smith didn't lose his career. No, but I mean, it, it'll be the one thing that you know people. It could be a positive thing people talk about because I feel like still it's that cloud over him in that sense. But I feel like Bad Boys is gonna lift that cloud over because I mean, it was a really good what trailer. What did he do? And everyone been doing for years. Everything. Everything is listen. He, he stood on ten toes and smacked, smacked the shit out that exactly. nigga. Exactly. And besides, what's going on in the media right now? Everything is getting exposed. So if you've been having sex, having all these orgies, trafficking kids and stuff like that, you're going to get caught. But I mean, or, there's something illegal about orgies. No, sex trafficking. Sex trafficking no. and orgies are very two different here's things. The thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Reason why the FBI raided in his his places first because he got evidence of people doing wildness. Well, yeah, that's what. So Mikey had told me that he said, "Yo, if the feds ever come, they already got some shit on you. They right. just they just looking for what they already have found right. out." So I mean, listen, God bless any listen whoever has been affected by any of these things. Please make sure to get the necessary help that you do need because it is you know emotional baggage that people do carry for years and years and years. That's and why now, I would say this: like, look what's coming up to surface. That's why I'm saying this. You know, as a black man, you always on a, a microscope. You will not be in trouble if you don't do wild stuff. Period. But you know, people love people love to push the edge. They like to push the button a little bit, and that's their own thing. You know. But um, but okay, back to WrestleMania four. So it was it, trash. It was not trash. It was trash. It just was. It, they did it. They did. I couldn't remember why the belt was was vacant. I have to look that up because I was confused the entire time. I couldn't remember why it was vacant because I was just sitting here, and it's interesting because it literally from WrestleMania like three to six, it was all the lead up to that because it was like Macho winning at four, and then that was the whole Mega Powers thing that led up to the main event at five, to then. Rick, I think, I think, yeah, I think Rick and, and Macho was six, but then Hogan was champion by set by six, and it was just like what? But um, no, I thought it was interesting that they did the whole they did the whole pay as a tournament though. I I hated every bit of that. I didn't um, think it was because that bad. because I think WrestleMania for me, and maybe because this, this is this is WrestleMania four, they're trying things out. So mm -hmm. so let's put that in perspective. It's the end of the story. 
Like Cody trying to finish his story. Not <laughs> always. Not always. Not Most always. of the time it is. It's it's the, it's the start of something different. Like we can go back. The WrestleMania that we grew up on. But look at they did the first Money in the Bank at WrestleMania. Yeah, but it's the end of a story to to the next ch- to, to the next book. Yeah. So I want Money in the Bank. That means the end of my mid card <sighs> reign to become champion. Okay. I I go to Res- uh, WrestleMania. Is the the is the the end to the beginning of something new? Let's talk about Stone Cold um, shaking hands with, with uh, what's his face, uh, Vince McMahon. Yeah, we ended the um, Icon versus Icon, Rock versus Hogan. Okay, it's the undisputed championship was won at Mania. Was it Mania? No. Was it, was it Mania? No, because I feel vengeance. like vengeance. It was vengeance. No, it was vengeance, and then we start the new thing because he defend he he um. Because but that tri- but H. that Triple H and Jericho match was at Mania. That, yeah, that was. So thing. you have that. It's mm. it, it, it's the you know what I mean. It's the it's yeah. the it's the start. It's it's like the ending. You don't put a whole ass tournament in the shit. And <laughs> but technically, <laughs> but technically, it is new beginnings because you try to find set the total going to be champion for the next year. Yeah, but. You have the match, the build up. I don't know what it was the build up up to the tournament. Okay. So that's a different conversation. Yeah, like I feel like damn. all they did, all they did was just had they just skipped the stuff for the money in the bank and just stretched it out for the whole night. Yeah, it's the same yeah. Thing. It, 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 but no, it King started, of the Ring. but it started off. It was a mixture of like Royal Rumble and King of the Ring all at once, and it was just like, what is going on here? It, it, it I just, mean, it Macho won, so I wasn't. Oh upset. yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Was that I when he that... ripped his when he ripped his shirt off? No, him? no, 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 no. I remember now. Is Andre won the belt in a tournament, and then and then the Million Dollar Man bought the belt from him. Yes. And then after I had it, the commission, I said, no, 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 no. The same fear. Oh wait, is that how DiBiase ended up being in the finals? Yeah. Okay. But it it, it was this. It felt all over the place. But <laughs> I I, I want to give some positives. Okay. So. First of all, I didn't know bad news <laughs> was was this popping in these streets. Because he made it to the final and won mm-hmm. and beat Bret Hart. Yeah. You know and then the, the, the last three was Junkyard Dog. And so, so, people, so people who don't know, um, we watched WrestleMania 4, and then the first match was a battle royal. Yes. And... It was for a trophy, whatever. <laughs> That's I, why I, I said it was a mixture of Royal Rumble and King it was just, all that it, it was just random. It was like, what? But you're, I'm watching, I was like, yo, Junkyard Dog was that guy. Yeah. And and then you watch Bad News, and then Bret Hart were, like, were the last three, were the last three, and I was like, yo, this is this is who they, these were the top guys. <laughs> yeah. Mid-card to, to, to upper card. It was a lot mean? of the baby faces at that time, because the crowd, that's who they went for. The crowd yeah. was cheering for them, and they loved them, so. So, Junkyard Dog had a move. I ain't even gonna hold you. I fucking pop. <laughs> so, if I can explain it, everybody's on the floor. He he hits everybody. He, so back at, at the time, Bret Hart and Bad News like jumped them mm-hmm. in the match. Of course, they only jumped the only black man. But Bad News is black. I said that's why they only jumped the black man. Yeah. But <laughs> so 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 they jumped them. Um, Junkyard Dog hit hit them both out. And my my apologies. I'm not familiar with Junkyard Dog in ring in ring stuff. I know his story. Know everything about him. But like watching him in the ring, I didn't watch him much because it was before. Why you apologizing for? It was before my time. But because they think wrestling fans are supposed to know everything from the day one to now. So, anyways, he literally <laughs> was in a dog position, like on all fours, and then he catapults his his body and, and headbutts Bret Hart, gets back on all fours, then catapults his body again and and. and and but bad news. And I was like, yo, this is fire. Wow. This is fire. This is creative. So I don't good. even know. All these niggas were built said, like built like middle aged men. Living the gimmick. All these niggas were built like middle aged men. And a part of me kind of enjoyed it because it looked like bum fights. <laughs> yo, somebody has sent me that thing you was talking about last week about them them wrestling things in Africa. Oh, fire. Yeah. Somebody sent me that. Fire, boy. It's and I said, I said, it, it's called Soft hell? Mat Wrestling. Mm-hmm. SMW. SM, it's on Vice. <laughs> it, it shit was fire, yo, boy. This shit but was crazy. I'm watching, I'm watching, I'm watching this shit. And I was like, yo, this shit is over. 
Like, and then I watch um Ted DBI. I watched I'm watching Ted DBI and um uh Okay. Hulk shout, Hulk. Out, shout out to David Lawson in the building that said we that. I was Hulk, like, I can't remember who said Hulk, Hulk, Hulk Hogan's Hulk Hogan's main man's um what's his name? Uh who, who this? Uh Bruce, Bruce BK. Did you see that dark side? Yeah. So Ooh. so he has the um the clippers. No, not Bruce BK. The other dude with, with the the no. two by four. Oh, uh, hacksaw. Name? Hacksaw. Hacksaw. Jim Jug. My nigga Jug. said. <laughs> so no. <laughs> that <laughs> match. I know. That I match between Ted and Jim was the most basic shit in the world, but I was popping the entire time. Story. First of all, they didn't do nothing ill. It was no flip. I think they took two bumps the entire match. Low key. But I was popping the entire match. And then, once again, I'm looking at them physically. They look like somebody's dad. <laughs> All of them were built like somebody's dad. But they got busy. But, but yeah. then you look at the main event, the people at the main event, Macho, mm. Hogan, all the guys that during that era looked like gods. So it's kind of like how it is right now is the people on the lower card may be they like like they still jacked, but they do all the flippy shit. The people on the, you know, the main and on the on who are main eventer do more of the simple stuff. Who tell stories through the action. They don't do so much all the crazy in ring work. Yeah, it's more psychology, right. especially the bigger you are, just because it has to make sense. Like it has to, it, like if you a big nigga doing flippy shit, it's like, mm, is that really what you do? Except as long as you're not. Listen, if you're die jack, you you are the exception to the rule. Okay, if you are not Josh Briggs, die jack, any of them big niggas. In NXT, they are the exception but to the rule. My thing is this: What's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with it because no. everybody, like someone said, Triple Nine said that I'm low key tired of flippy shit. Okay, but it's kind of like the NBA. It's kind of like saying that I'm tired of people dunking. I'm tired of people being freakishly athletic. But if we keep on breeding with each other, like if what athletic chick dates like a dude that who's athletic, oh. you don't think they had that don't have athletic babies? You don't think that it was Tay that said wrestling only morning show? Oh, oh wow. <laughs> So, so this is why I always look at everybody like any sport gonna naturally evolve. Naturally, you can't stop it because as a kid, I didn't make a character like as a kid growing up. We made a character who was a powerhouse, an all power move, and they was like, all right, they would switch it up and we a character that does all the moves. So we look at it as like, yo, why limit ourselves to only one particular move set? I think it's just more or less what type of like wrestling style you prefer. I think that sounds like for me growing up, I was I love technical wrestling. So like the cruiserweight shit for me, like when WC, WCW first hour was just cruiserweight shit, I was locked in. There was you couldn't tell me nothing see, different. See, but it just, complain. but it just no, but it just depends on the type of like what type of style of wrestling you like. Some people prefer. Listen, you got niggas that prefer the flippy shit. You got niggas that prefer the groundwork. You got niggas that prefer the technician, the submission work. Like it just is more of what you like, what gravitates to you as the fan of you cool. watching it. I understand that. So, because I, I can get, I can get sometimes with the flippy shit. I'd be like, oh, come on, because for me, it doesn't always connect the dots for the story. And do you think that how that old one see a bunch of niggas who's mad big? We can't move. I do. We have but zero maybe not you. Maybe not you, but I don't mind the big No, 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 no. I like you. No, 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 no. I love that I don't mind no, 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 no. There's a difference. I ref a lot of big niggas matches. So I know the difference between a good big nigga match and a bad big nigga match. When it's two people who have no chemistry at all as big niggas, it's gonna be long nights, my niggas. So, so, but, yeah, but, 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 the but that's so much of probably their style of, of being big niggas because you can still be a big nigga and have different and styles. That's what I'm trying to say though. Yeah. It's just like, yo, certain times it's just like a lot of people don't have good chemistry together. Correct. And like, and, and like how that that could be your favorite type of match and my favorite type of match. So this is why that I always tell everybody like, yo, you may like this, but don't discredit the rest of the card because you need the rest of the card to make the show. Because if you only like big niggas fighting, right? After a while, you, know, you look like, all right, man, I need some diverse big niggas fighting. You but feel me? Like, for example, I like a cuzzo. Even though he does a lot of basic big nigga shit, I like his presentation. I like how he um like um I like how he talks trash to the rap and stuff like that. And there's a big nigga like Rayhan. Ray Han does like the big boo. He all sexy. He's a nasty big nigga. Feel me? And you got the pretty boy, a P P I'm a P P B smooth. You feel me? There's all levels type of big niggas. That's why I like you could beat your style of wrestling, but diversify it. But the thing is, you're saying the worst. 
Like, I think we need to look at the good big dudes. That's what no, I said. No, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me let me finish. We look at the big big dudes. We look at the the big cruiserweights. You look at the um the the big the great technical wrestlers. That's when you pick which one you like the the best. Because if you're only looking at the bad, because I like I because people always shit on Brock and Roman at WrestleMania. The last one that they had. Oh, oh no. The, the, I love that, that match. Fire. But a lot of people, that was a good, that was a good big person match. But some people who love good technical wrestling would have been that was a bad Absolutely match. Absolutely trash. The worst. I, I that's totally that's agree what with I'm that. trying to say. Is like people judge off the bad. So if I eat bad pasta, I'm gonna think pasta is bad. That's just like Lauren three forty that over here that just said the a worst big man match is Big Show versus Kane, no. which is interesting because no. I if you go back I forget, I think it's that I think it was a Raw where it was Big Show versus Undertaker and they fell through the damn ring mm-hmm. and I was just like man this it was larger than life uh, and them niggas barely that, did anything. No 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 the worst big nigga fight to me is Kane and Undertaker. No that shit is never fire. Absolutely not. No Name a fire. No. I'm talking about they I first, well, their first, hold on, hold their on, first WrestleMania match, and then the niggas the hold following on, month had an inferno hold match. On, hold on, no. hold on. What match mm-hmm. to answer the question that had you like? Oh, I just gosh. did. I just answered it. WrestleMania 14. That shit was trash. It was not the. Let me explain. It, this hold here. on. They hold went. On, hold on, you know. You want on. me to answer hold your on, question? Hold on, hold on. It was trash in ring. It was not trash. Hold on, you know. Hold on. It was trash in ring. But we were so heavily invested because of the story. After those two matches, all the matches was trash after that. No, they it weren't. Took, they were not. They, it took, first of all, it took Taker Sorry. three tombstones to pin Kane. Nigga, it was a typical big nigga like, match. They went, they went body for body with each other. Are you guys and then what I'm then, saying? I'm agreeing with y'all. I what? said, you see, y'all don't listen. Clearly, you I just said, went and said the match was trash. And then we say here defending it. You was like, actually. Y'all not listening. I clearly did say, yo, after I said the in-ring match may not be the greatest. It wasn't. But the storyline had you invested. That's no, the in-ring was good. Hold on. Hold on. And I finish. said after that, it was trash. Because the story that you was not invested at all. Because that's the first time that anybody took that was Tombstone from Undertaker. So you was invested at this monster. And then you was like, yo, let me see my nigga King get the clap back. The story behind that is the first ever Inferno match. Outside of those elements, if you take away all those elements and they fight on some AEW style, big nigga versus big nigga, in ring was not that great. The fact that you even said AEW style is is already a telltale that I already know that is it's a no. Nigga, no, I don't were, agree. They were at scrapping. All. Them niggas was going because head, if you're gonna say, body on, for body. Hold they on, was if, going you're, at if you're gonna say that so match I, was whack, I don't agree. Then you might as well say that Undertaker versus Mankind was whack because on the same shit. Boy, niggas were no, no, no. You got your shit off. Ooh. You got your shit off, and you wanted to cook, Ooh. and that meal tasted like shit, my nigga. Oh, my now, God. now give no, me the ingredients. No salt. No Let salt. Let me put some ingredients. No salt. My nigga, they were brawling. Them niggas was going hard. They were fucking each other you, up. The, imagine, yo, think about the time, and this is pulling the this is pulling the current way back. Remember you and your brother for it? Think about that. Okay, nigga, okay. we think fought like Undertaker and Kane, think about and we it. got arrested. Think about it. So, story time. So, <laughs> I was not going for the story time. Nah, nah. So, 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 so niggas gotta know. So, me and my brother got arrested on things on the day after Thanksgiving. <laughs> so, you're probably wondering, Wilkins, how did you and your brother get arrested the day after Thanksgiving? So, as you can see, I'm a D, I'm a I'm a sizable size human being. My brother is as well. Oh, thank now, you. <laughs> that's why I was laughing. I was like. He actually uh, makes a point. Yeah. Like so, obviously, I was 20 pounds lighter. My brother was about 30 pounds lighter. So, we got into a fight. at. So, in our house where we lived in, we lived in the basement floor. It was a fully furnished basement. We had two rooms. And then, and, you know, we had a fridge, whatever. We That was that was our, our, our apartment, quote, unquote. Uh-huh. So, me and my brother used to get into fights. This nigga used to take my clothes and wear them and mess them up. It wasn't like, oh, I t- I'm, t- I'm going to borrow this and I'm going to bring it back the way that I got it. No, I'm going to borrow this and it's a hole in it. I'm going to borrow this and there's a grease thing that can't come out. So this lovely morning, this lovely morning, I got tight. 
I ran up in his room. He's like, yo, what you doing, my nigga? I was like, yo, you fucked up. And I had, uh, and the thing about it, I was dressed like a wrestler because I had no shirt on and I was and, and I was in my tiny white. Shout out to Demon Diva in the building. So shout out to D- Demon Diva. So I got no, I, I got drawers on and I and I think about it. He's like, fuck you. And he pushes me. I was like, nah, nigga, fuck you too. So I push him back. So then I picked up. The machete that we have at the house. Nigga, what? Yo, y'all really hate I him. picked up the machete. He picked up a two by four. He don't. He don't ever got no clothes on. So, <laughs> so I picked up the two by four. And I wasn't going to hit him. I was trying to scare him. So then I hit the two by four with the machete. He, he the, 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 the two by four falls out of his hand. So I was like, I got this nigga. Oh, so head. I so grabbed the two by four. On. And I forgot the two by four had a, had a nail in it. So I hit him. My brother has great reflexes. He blocked it. But now there's a nail in his hand from uh-huh. the two by four. Uh-huh. At the time, my mom lives upstairs. She's yelling, oh, my God, stop yeah. fighting. Stop fighting. I'm calling the police. I'm calling the police. Oh, mom. You she, know, that's no more thing not to do. She has said this numerous times. So, I, so we didn't take her seriously. <laughs> we fight. Oh, I forgot to tell you. He, he, um... He speared, no, I speared him through the, no, he speared me through the door. What in the? And then I picked him up and I rock bottom through <laughs> his bed and I broke his bed. Damn, nigga didn't even have a bed to sleep in? So then, this is, this is all true. This is all fact. That's why he, that's why he's smiling. <laughs> so, Shout out to Jock in the Build a Spontaneous so we So match. we did have a hardcore match. So I slammed through the bed. And then. The beginning of WrestleMania 15. And then <laughs> we just stopped. I went to my room. Yeah, he got, went to work. Yeah, I got exhausted. Yes, we were tired. So then, I'm ironing my clothes. At the time, I was a lead, a lead like an assistant manager at Express. So, and then I was ironing my shirt, and I hear a knock on my door, on my bedroom door. I open the door. There is eight cops standing outside my bedroom door. Now I'm gonna go into my brother's perspective. He's running out the house to go to work because at the time he was working at um at Golden Cross. He was yeah, a cook yeah. at Golden yeah. Cross. Oh, Ran make his more. Yeah. He was he was a cook at Golden Cross making rice and peas and jerk chicken in the back. I still know how to do it too. So how to cook. He <laughs> a lot so of people don't know. As that. he's coming out, the cops surround him. This nigga was about to run, and he almost got shot. <laughs> Shaka Saturday night. <laughs> he almost got shot, but he. He he laid down. They put they, 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 they put the gun out. No 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 no. no. They told him they told him you're under arrest. Stop. It was a so, different time. So so, so they I, cuffed I'll him. Sure. So, so they cuffed him. Now back to my perspective. I'm in my I'm in my basement and I was mm-hmm. like, damn. I had no clothes on. I had no clothes on, and they flipped my mattress. Oh, they probably thought you had drugs. They thought I had drugs or something. They thought <laughs> I had a, a bunch of shit. So they was like, you'll put some pants on, but they handcuffed me. And they helped me put pants on. Wow. You was out here. So. You was outside. So then they sat me down and started, they flipped my entire room. They went through my thing. They thought I had drugs or something. Drugs. It was drug, and another drug cop, war. another cop is going through my porno collection. Is this white nigga. He's like, yo, you got big booty 68. This shit fire. How the oh. cops is, is, is And I was like, yo, what porn. are you doing? I started laughing. He's like, yo, Scott got a fatty white dude. White wow. guy. He's like, Scotty got Sky Black got a big butt. If you know who Sky Black is, you know. <laughs> so I, I got handcuffs on me. This is like rocking mankind type of shit. So they throw a, my leather jacket on my shoulders. Okay. So I look like a real criminal coming yeah. out of here. Yeah, because you handcuffed with leather jacket on looking flashy, but you're not really flashy. So then I come out my house. There's four cop cars in front of the house. Like, <laughs> Like, like they all yeah, they blocking off the block because they, they don't they, know. They they, mm. they they blocking off the block, and then um my neighbors are looking through their window, they coming outside, they look at us like you like the way it looked, it looked like it was a drug bus gone. It was a drug bus, and we was finally caught. Yeah. So now the story doesn't end here. So I get in the car. I was like, yo, why you guys, why so many cops? Because, you know, I'm a friendly guy. Yeah. I start talking to the cops. Why he also questionable. Like, what's So I was on? like, why did you bring so many cops? Not that same. He's like, yo, your mom called and said there was a two by four and a machete involved. This many cops had to show up for backup. I said, you're right. No problem. <laughs> so then the cop is like, yo, I heard you work in nightlife. First of all, I don't know how you know. This. He's like, yo, if you can help me um, 
Dude, if you can help us get some drugs, get, get some drug bust going, we, we, we can get you out here faster. I said, I don't know anything. I said, you try to get me to snitch? I was like, what's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> so story continues. Now we're at the police station. I see this nigga here. He's like, hey, what's up? And they can't put us in the same cell because we got into the fight. The hold on, hold. Yeah. It's between y'all two. So yeah. they put us in separate holding cells. But what, as we go into our separate holding cells, they, they had like a like a um a, a crate of like peanut butter sandwiches and oranges and like milk. So they're like, if you're hungry, there's some food here. I was like, I'm not eating this because if I eat this, that means I'm going to stay the night. This nigga here grabbed like two sandwiches, two oranges, and yeah. two milks. He said, I'm, he said, I'm be prepared. And he's and, and then he goes to his side, I go to my cell. I see him across there fucking up these sandwiches. I was hungry. Just eat. <laughs> nigga said, I miss work. I couldn't get no golden crust. So fuck it. And so then they they they, they cuff us, they take us to a bigger holding cell. Yeah. And then me being me, I started making friends with people. I was like, hey, what you in here for? He's like, yo, this one dude said that he went to Queen Center Mall because it was open 24 hours. He yeah. stole, came back and stole and got caught. Okay. Then my brother makes friends with a crackhead. Well, her, as you, he, and, and as he, you know from previous My brother comes episodes. to me. He's like, he's like, yo, I guess what story I heard. I was like, what story are you talking about? He's like, yo, that guy over there, he got caught. With a crack pipe because he fell asleep in a in a in a car that yeah. wasn't his, yeah. and he got high in a car that wasn't his. Yeah. Oh shit. So we talking, we we chilling. Niggas is having a party. And then in the holding cell. In the holding cell, the bigger holding cell, there's like a glass, and you can talk to your your, your criminal, your, yeah. um, your 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 public defender. Yeah. So I'm talking to a public defender. I was like, yo, me and my brother got into a fight. He ain't gonna press no charges, I don't think. Now, keyword, he ain't gonna I... press no charges. So I, we're gonna continue this. Let's remember that. So I'm talking to him. He's like, oh, you guys should be fine. You guys should, should get out tonight. I said, bet. So by the way, I called my aunt to lie to the job and said that, that, that something happened to me. She came up with a fake um, yeah. a fake doctor's, doctor's note. So now they take us They take us to the, to, to the judge. This is Black Friday, by the way. Yeah. I don't know how we pulled oh, this Oh, I don't off. know how you got yeah. a judge because if it was the holiday weekend, you wouldn't have seen anybody till Monday. So this is Black Friday. So we dare... And the judge is like, Wilkins Petit, Wilkins Petit, would you like to press any charges against you, against 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 Mr. Black? And I go, nah, I'm good. Now let's get over to this Negro right here. Mm. They ask him, would you like to press any charges against Wilkins? Why this nigga pause? <laughs> and he had to think about it. <laughs> he had to think about if he's gonna press any charges, and then the main he, reason why we in this situation is because he took my shit and messed it up. Because he didn't know like how far he probably was wanting to let it go, and he probably was still aggy. So he probably was just like, "I'm gonna make him work for it without him knowing I'm making work for it." Because that's how this one do. So he probably was just like, "I'm gonna I'm get you a suspenseful answer." I don't give a fuck yet. He had a he had a two by four. First of all, at the moral of the story, guys, is stop. Don't don't wear your brother shit. <laughs> uh, only wear your shit, okay? But um, all right, let's get back into some good old wrestling talk. Did y'all see the beef between Eric Bischoff and, and Tony Khan this Tony, week? So, somebody needs to take away Tony Khan's phone. I keep saying that, and y'all not listening to me. <laughs> but I'm sitting here while Eric Bischoff eat to him. <laughs> I said, oh, shit. But the thing is, so. That, and this is and this is what what yo Tony Khan is doing good things for his company. Like I I don't think did you guys see about that guy that that, that, that guy Kobe that got that got hired by um mm. by, by yeah, AW? The, the new C yeah, was yeah. a COO. He's a new C C COO, kind of what the same position Triple H has. Mm -hmm. You and let's keep it a buck. And I know we're gonna go into 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 um into the, the Wednesday into, into Wednesday dynamite, but mm -hmm. you have Swerve on the verge of becoming the first black champion for AEW, regardless of how long the company's been there. Mm -hmm. It's an early, it's an early move for, for a company like that to have, make somebody black as their, their mm -hmm. champion and borderline the face of their company. You bring in Will Washington to be part of creative. He's one, he's one of the main reasons why Swerve is on his hot run that he's on right now. You get Mercedes Monet to be probably one of the highest paid wrestlers, wrestlers out, out right now and the highest paid woman ever in professional wrestling. Mm -hmm. 
Your company's doing solid. Not doing great, not doing bad, but doing solid. Why the fuck are you focused on Eric Bischoff? And what he does, else. and focus, and not focus on the company that you're trying to build and the good things that 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 that, that you are doing. And I listen, we've all been there. <laughs> There's that nigga that you don't like, and you want us, and you want to clap back all the time, every day. But we're adults. We have bigger fish to fry. And what made it the situation so bad is that he wasn't even directly talking about Eric, talking to Eric. He was talking to John Alba, and John Alba was the one was the but guy. But he's the producer he, of, of the podcast. Yeah, but the thing about it, why, why do that? Because unnecessary. because John is catching strays now, low key, and he ain't even do nothing. So for those that do not know, um, from my understanding, that Eric Bischoff and um, what's his name? What's um Rick Flair's son-in-law? What's the, what's his oh, name? No, no, Conrad? Conrad. 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 No, Conrad. Conrad. Oh, Conrad. You know what? That is a, that is a, still uh, an answer too. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> but Eric Bischoff and Conrad, their podcast, they had announced that they, that that's coming to an end. Eric Bischoff has said um, that he has many other projects going on, and that he wouldn't be yeah. able to dedicate the time and energy to doing the podcast on a regular, consistent basis. So they decided to end their podcast, and Eric Bischoff um, actually started his own new thing, Solo Dolo. Um, so and I I meant to sing out that because I had watched it last night. Um, but basically, Tony Khan had po- posted or tweeted out something. Uh, he posted a tweet about the podcast coming to an end. But you were saying that he was talking about the producer. But I was just sitting here like, yo, if no one's talking to you, no one's not talking to you, why are you talking to somebody? Shout out to Tony Lines and Tony in the building. Thank you so much, my love, for the love and support. Um, hope to see you at yeah, WrestleMania. Exactly. Okay. He was right there. He was in Delaware. Yeah. So. I'll take home. That is your second home. So, yeah. So, no, Eric Bischoff was... So, that, then once Tony had tweeted what he said, <laughs> Eric came out with the response and was just like, you you basically, like, you worried about the wrong people. Yeah, but when, that's... But that's when what you I'm... need to be worried about filling the, these arenas up that you that you put in these shows at 18,000, 20,000 persons arenas and you only filling it a third, a, a fourth. But so yeah, that's what like, I'm saying. Like, uh, worry about... Worry things, about what you got going on. The good things that you're on. doing for the company and the way you're going to grow the company because, let's be real, the company's been stagnant for the past year and a half. Oh, absolutely. Past year and a half, AEW's been stagnant. And, and, and you know what? Sometimes it's good to be stagnant. At least, at least you maintain it. Your head is above water. But at the same time, you're not growing. At the same time, you're not doing great. You're not doing phenomenal. So let's, let's, let, let's do better. And I will always say this. AEW was put on this planet to make, a, to make WWE better. You did say that once upon a time. AEW was put on this planet to make WWE better. Because people... There's a story that went around that Vince asked Daniel Bryan to watch, or Bryan Danielson to watch AEW to see what they're doing over there. Because obviously he was catching some heat and and he... Because they were biting it into their... Into their market share. Into their market share. So what, what, what are we doing? Now, lay off the coke, and if you're gonna do some coke, don't pick up your phone. I mean, I mean, there's no difference from what Vince does, because instead Vince he just yell at his all his coworkers. I mean, all all, all people underneath him yell at them, talk to them crazy. Tony Khan actually at them and say, "Yo, this is how I feel about you." But see, no, the thing though, as I will say, is that just on a business side of things, and I'll use us as an example. No, we're not perfect, as as it may seem here to y'all. Like we may have everything all together and we all kumbaya, and but there's been times where we have not been kumbaya. But y'all would never know that. Y'all would never be aware of that. Y'all would never know our struggles, our differences, our fights, unless we talk about it. What Tony Khan does is he lets out the the dirty laundry in that sense exactly to the public and it shouldn't be that way and and as i was saying it so in saying that when it comes to vince yeah shit 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 ain't clean no but you will never know and that's how it really should be behind as a business you should i should never know that your dirty laundry unless it comes out in a way to to either grow the company and saying like you know what we've overcome this we've you know We've taken the time to, you know, to right our wrongs and done this, that, and the other. But 
in that in that instance, like when you end up always airing things out publicly, even the shit with with Jack Perry <laughs> or <laughs> Tony Khan, like he was like on a Zeus a little bit. Um, because it's always sometimes like when you poke the bear so much, or like when you when people be like trying to poke at you so much, and you be like chill, calm, and cool, and collected, but then it'd be that one little final push where you just like listen, shut the Actually, fuck up. In fact, people rarely try to push my buttons, but see, but people it, try to push your buttons all the time. Yeah, you got you got the better side of this thing. Come on, you you really got the better side, <laughs> and, and, and I and I appreciate that because we There's know what's crazy. There's a balance. You know what's crazy? I'm more crazier than you. I'm probably. I tell people that. I am more crazy. He go, he go for the jugular. He he gonna hurt you where it really hurt you. Oh no no no! <laughs> I am wild, disrespectful, and I'm, uh, it's gonna go on tape. I will never kill somebody, but I will kill somebody. Killing with kindness. That's all I tell everybody is like killing with kindness. I'm actually the most calmest person you can sit down and reason with. But it's just, but in, but in, in bringing it all back, it's just a sense of you should not be airing your dirty laundry. That's and and you and that's a that's great. Just, that's just point. what and it it's is. What you you said you said it right. It is on this. It is the disrespect is the same thing, but it's kept at home. Yeah. Like, okay. That that's and I think that's what you're saying the right thing, but you know that 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 thing. What's done in the kitchen, we keep it in the kitchen. Yeah, and I think that's that, that, what it is. That black people motto, like when you, you say, "Whatever happens at home, you don't talk about what happens at home outside." But this is what I kind of look at it this way: is this is how I see it? Mm -hmm. Is we only have one example of like a real public example of how a millionaire is supposed to act. That's only from Vince McMahon. So over the years, over the couple of months, over a couple of weeks, me working with different promoters. I know what to expect from this promoter, that promoter, and this uh, from, from, from different promoters. For example, I know what I'm expect from Peter. Mm -hmm. I know what to expect when I expect to work with Brian XL. I know what to expect if I'm working with Joe Kim. Mm -hmm. Certain things that these people do, I'm looking like, all right, man, that's just Joe Kim. You feel me? Is my paper right? I'm gonna get good matches. Are you uh, like um like are you like um are you like disrespecting me? How are you behind closed doors when like the camera's not going? And a lot of times there are great people behind closed doors. And I think that a lot of time is since we have so much access to everybody, we don't allow people to grow. Because when AW first started out until now, Tony Khan presentation on screen has been a lot better. He's not at jittery. He's a lot more confident. And his tweet is not so much how it was before. We're watching somebody grow up in real time running two different companies. And, and you're 100% right. But the, the growing pains is taking a lot longer. But also the growing pains doesn't need to be on, on, on camera. It don't need to be front and center. We're all, we've been what? We've been doing this podcast for almost, what, five years? Right. We've Who we were five years ago or, or are not the people we are right now and today. However, we don't need to always put that in front street. We don't always need to be like, hey, guys, we're, we're bigger and better. No, you your own growth is, is, is going to show in the work that you do. So it's like all this growth that you talked about that Tony Khan has done from the beginning of starting his own company, which once again, no one's ever going to take away because that's not an easy thing to do. It's expensive. Too. <laughs> Hella expensive. <Right. laughs> okay. But at the same breath, every time he does one of these antics on social media, it's like 10 steps back. It negates all the growth that he's done. I understand that. Someone said, Triple Nine said, grow up. That motherfucker's 40. <laughs> Understanding. Let me explain. Well, age ain't nothing but a number, boo -boo. No, 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 because there's certain aspects of life people are very immature in. Obviously, Tony Khan is still immature when it comes to this area in his life because he probably is a fantastic businessman. He's probably one of those bosses where, like, yo, you guys should have a conversation with him and it will be good. Certain areas dealing with people, he has to grow up in. You could actually tell somebody, hey, this is how you do it. But if you have so many years of bad behavior, it's going to take some more years to get rid of this bad behavior. i give you an example. When Moses, it was time for these people to move on to the next chapter, to the promised land. They spent 40 years in the wilderness. People look at it this way, like, oh, they spent so much years, this, that, that. God had to keep them in the wilderness for those years to understand that we have to kill generations to get the generation that we need to learn new practices. You know why Moses couldn't go to the promised land? Because God saw it fit that, yo, your attitude is not going to affect what I have for these people in this next chapter of their life. So this is why I always tell everybody, it takes time for people to grow up. How EW was in the beginning is different. I felt when Cody was there, Tony Khan was at his best. 
because I felt that Cody let him be him. He didn't judge him. None of that. And I think, you know, it's so funny you mentioned that. I think a lot of talent um, probably feel the same way because but, if you have not, and I, I highly recommend, um, Chris Van Vleek had an interview with Mike Santana. Um, so check it out if you have not already. And mm -hmm. Santana talked about him. Actually, Cody was the one that got them on AEW. And every time where, you know, they needed advice, or even when he found out that his dad passed, Cody was the one that sat with him and cried with him and talked to him about it and stuff like that. Even down to um, what you call it, Warlow, another Cody guy that you know once again felt at that time when Cody was there that you know he was like, all right, I'm, I'm gonna listen. I'm I'm gonna move the way that you that you know you recommended because you've been in it. You've been in my position. You you've been in the promised land in that sense. So I just think it's it's for for in in. And all what it boils down to, really, Tony Khan has to be receptive to the people that he has around him to 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 put out a better product, a but better that's, television but that's not, show. But the, but the thing about it, y'all answered the question. The problem with Tony Khan right now is because he has a bunch of yes men around him. Mm, yeah, agree with you. and then you said everybody keeps saying the same thing. Yes, Cody had a different, somewhat of a different vision from him. Yeah, but when you look at it, he wasn't a yes man. Cody made mistakes. We all know yeah. that promo, that promo about, and then racism. Him, him set himself on fire. Yeah, mistakes were made, <laughs> but can never come back. The from thing that. is, the <laughs> thing is, you have somebody that's willing to challenge you in a respectful manner, and that's what and, you need. And that's what you need, and mm -hmm. also can can keep you somewhat level headed. If everybody's saying yes to you, how are you ever going to grow? You you can't grow, and that you're talking about growth, and you're 100 percent right. Growth takes time. But if nobody's saying, yo, my nigga, what, what is wrong with that tweet? True. Right. There's a problem. Nobody like, checking him. Like, for instance, like, for instance, the, I, we, let's go back into time. The swole situation. Wow. Somebody just mentioned that on the post of Janelle. So the swole situation. Ooh. When everybody was saying, when, when, when your whole entire team is saying, you're right, you're right, you're right. Just taking his side, talking about you're great, you're great, you're great. And the few people that, that did go up against them are no longer with the company. So that's the problem. You need people that be like, yo, hey, you're fucking up. You need to switch that up. Oh, there's Somebody a different that has, way to do this. And, and there's a different way to do this. I understand that, but this is where I'm going to shoot the whole wrestling business bail. There's no official HR but Janelle. <laughs> Outside of Janelle, there's no official HR. I appreciate that. Because I give you an example. Even in the real world, HR is not your friend. Dead ass, HR will go behind your back and be like, yo, this happened, this, or this happened. Even some cases, the union is not your friend. That's a whole other situation I can get into. My baby I over here. With the union back in the My day. baby over here burnt with the union. So, <laughs> <laughs> My baby over here burnt. <laughs> I have stories for days. So in wrestling, it's extra cutthroat. It's just like every other form of entertainment. Because like, like, like you said, Hey, we came in defense of Big Swole, not as an AEW employee, but as a person. Nah, but as a community. Yeah, as a it community. just was like... Be be because like at the end of the day, Big Swole was in all y'all niggas' locker rooms before Tony. B Big, Swole is, Big Swole is a veteran. She saw people come referees, saw people come big-time wrestlers. She been there. There was lack of respect there. But in the business of wrestling, yo... It's on some like we ain't gonna book you. We'll keep you on TV. That will hurt you way more. I can still pay you. Pay you. I got the money, and that's it. There's no real checks and balances in wrestling. But that's and that's what Cody but, brought. Yeah, but because yeah. True. because when you look at when you look at checks and balances, yes, yeah, somebody might be wrong here. You're gonna be right here, but you but you check each other Where out, you... and that's the whole point. Mm -hmm. That's why like you need to hear other people's opinions. I I remember one time, I, I so. Years ago, there was I used to work at the school. You all know the school I worked yeah, at. Yeah, yeah. We had a racism issue. Yeah, I remember. I remember. <laughs> and they brought they brought in like somebody to talk about racism and all of this. I ain't get nothing from that because I was like, "Nigga, shut up." But you you made but he made sense on one thing. You know that phrase, "Great minds think alike." Yes. Yeah. He said this, and I'll never forget that. He's like, "That's a horrible thing." Because ago, yeah. great minds don't think alike. You want people to think differently from you. You can have the same 
basic beliefs, but you want people to think different from you because that's how things grow. You bring different things. That's how bring things bring. Like all three of us here, we bring different things to. Yeah, I was gonna say. Think about when we when we plan when we sit and we talk about job or slam. Yeah, and we all may not be in agreement with certain things, but what you may bring to the table maybe something special and unique that I didn't think of and that's why it's important for us that's why it's important when you have a team you have a well team that that has different that can bring different things to the True. table and that's the unfortunate point with Tony Khan is that you have people there that have been through different time periods of wrestling and can bring different things to the table and even when because I know I know you be looking on the internet Tony and I know you be listening Tony so even when you are listening to other podcasters other other media influencers, Twitter, all this stuff, you are still getting different things. And yet you still are being non-receptive to anything. And that's where the stunning of the growth is going to come from. But I think it's because when you have that much money, it's hard to trust people, especially if you had it your entire life. Now, when he does listen to people, and and I continue to keep saying this, Will Washington turned Swerve's career around. Y'all know... Swerve don't like me. Hate you. He hates me. Hate you, B. He ha- he he, uh, he hates me. No and beef. it is and it is what it is. No beef. Twenty twenty four. It is what it is. But I can do give respect where it's due, because his career has been phenomenal the past seven months. So would you say that Swole is your LeBron? Swerve. And, yeah, and after that, you guys just skip. No, because. I will give respect where it's due because the dude has been phenomenal. I saw where you were going with that. No, but I it's felt not. That, but it's not. It's not. I felt it though. It's not. It's not. And the or thing maybe is, Stephen A. If he wants to have a conversation maybe with me, Stephen A. Listen, we can have swear. a conversation Listen, with me. Listen, anybody that he's knows not, him, no, he's tag not gonna, a minute. But the thing about it, he's not going to have a conversation come on, with me. Come on the show. Let's I talk. genuinely want to talk come to Swerve. Come talk to us on the but show. But he's not going to have but a conversation with me. see it this way. When you, go, when you guys see this episode post, tag a minute. But everybody. You see it this come way. Come on. You see it this way. This is what a lot of other we sports commentary would do. This is what this is the norm. They will talk trash about this particular athlete. This athlete is trash, blah, 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 and invite him on the podcast. He probably feels that if I come on here, I gain nothing from it. You gain way more than and, me. And of course, that's and that's and that's a reason I, we don't gotta talk on the podcast. We can talk in private. And I will tell you how I feel about the situation. But I, I no, also I also that. I, I, I want the interview. Come on here. I also, I also that. respect the fact that when you saw me at Hog, you looked the other way and wouldn't even look talk to me. Because Prince Nod, I didn't know the beef. And he gave me, he was like, yo, this my man. That's my right. man. That's my man. That's, <laughs> that's my man. man. That's, that's my man. Prince Nod, I was so in love. That's, that's my man. Homie. But that's I understood. Listen, listen. And this is not, I'm not here, Oh, because we were going to clip this up and say, oh, who's trying to make content? No, this is some real shit. Nah, it's real life. I understand yo. that you were just like, nah, I ain't fucking with you. And that's okay. And it's okay. However, comma, I, I disagree I with the way you. you came off on something. But at the same time, I'm going to respect what you've done. And the reason why I bring this up, because Will Washington went the other direction with something and then told Tony Khan, this is how we're going to do it. We need to push Swerve because the talent is fucking there. Yeah, He's the top three talents in that company yeah, right now. Absolutely. Give or take. I don't care how much you hate me. I don't care how much you don't want to talk to me. Yeah. I'm going to say this. You're the top three talent in the company. Yes. But at the same time, the reason why that's working is because this motherfucker Tony Collins into Will Washington. Okay, but my <laughs> thing is this way, and I'm looking at it as far as like military. Mm-hmm. I, listen, one, two, three, freak. I'm gonna put it like this: He said something about a, about a, about a list that was a, from our people. He got confused about it. He confused it with something else. There was no confusion, bro. Whatever it was, he sounded crazy. Yeah. We commented on it. We said our thing. I may have tweeted about it. <laughs> yeah. And he pro- he got tight. Yeah. So he don't want to fuck with me. He got me blocked. But at the same time, I'm going to show love where it needs to be shown love. I ain't that petty. I, res- I-, I will always put business before business and respect first. Of course. 100%. Absolutely. Yeah, no matter how I feel. As long as you don't disrespect me. But, it, like, let me ask you a question. Be honest. We, we're on air. We're, we're, we're super live. Wrestling only morning show. Yeah. Hashtag that. Triple is, stupid. Let me ask you guys. Ask you, cause you think that your beef in the wrestling business, people beefing with you, affected us. Of course it oh, did. Absolutely. Of course it did. Absolutely. Of course it did. <laughs> you already knew the answer to that. I don't know you, why you I, asked I, that I don't question. know why you say this. Like, what? 
My nigga, they, we're potting right now. Okay, you want to talk? We're potting. Oh, okay, you want to oh, okay. You want to play stupid? Now Let's now play we're, stupid we're, games. Okay. Oh, Let's my God, games. guys. Did you not know? Did you not know? That... I got problems with niggas. <laughs> yes, I got problems with niggas. But I think you want to. I think at the end of the day, and we'll get into this week in wrestling because we want to do get into the WrestleMania predictions before we do sign off. I think at the end of the day, it really is just there is that that lack of communication and understanding in different point of views and i think had he not reacted the way that he did to that said list and instead of recognizing it as a way to be recognized then i I don't think we would be having any of the following conversations that came after that and like i said i think there was just a lack of their understanding and a lack of appreciation because once again lists are subjective but for the for that particular platform it gets the it, it gets recognized and anyone in the industry that gets recognized they appreciate it for the most part they're like you know what it's not so much like you're not always gonna be number one you're not always gonna be number two people are always gonna be ahead of you but for the just that that recognition alone should have been respected and then that and that's where it really went downhill after that but like i said listen when y'all see this po- this this episode post, tag him. I I, I invite him. I, I would. He he love. not coming on. I would. You listen. You never know. You never know. He's not what? coming. You know what? You know what, Janelle? Know. Why don't you ask his co-host? I'm not asking shit. Then, then yeah, why don't you? Yeah, why don't you? Why don't you text his co-host? And I knew. Yeah, and I, I knew that was coming. And I knew that was coming. Since we pawned, I'm not doing. Since we pawned, I'm not doing that. And I'm pretty. And I'm pretty sure my nigga is on live and would prefer me not even go that route. So I'm not. I'm just saying. Since we no, there is no beef. I got no beef with dude. I have no beef with dude. I have no beef at all. Don't disrespect Liv Morgan's push. Like I have no (laughs) beef. I have no beef with homeboy. It's fine. And I and I and I I want to end the beef that Ricky Starks has with me. Yo, yeah, we gotta fix that. If anybody got, if any beef is gonna end, it has to be that. <laughs> Listen, one, two, three underscore free. You'd be surprised how many blocks he got. Yeah, yeah half a, a quarter. <laughs> you, you, be then, very surprised. And it's and crazy. It's, a quarter it of, of black wrestlers, a quarter of the black wrestlers in the community got me blocked. <laughs> but like I said, I think everything at the end of the day is just is worth the conversation. But my thing is this way, and I'm not is, doing that. So no, yo, <laughs> I hate to say this, but I feel like. When it comes to be a black content creator, especially in wrestling space, I feel like we give the same exact rope that these white promoters give us. Because if Chris Van Leek or someone like a, a, a Sam Roberts did something, say something very similar, it's a longer rope. They wanted to have a conversation. They wanted to listen and stuff like that. But when it comes to us, it's automatically like, you know how hard it is. You know how it is in the street. I work three times harder, blah, 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 blah. So it's kind of like a... Yo, I can give you all the compliments in the world and say that yo, you're a great athlete, blah, blah, blah. But one thing I don't like is the fact that you read a like like you 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 have red braids. Oh fuck this nigga. I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. Oh rage. But he said all of this. The only thing you don't like is just that. Similar to you and Amber Mood. I mean to you, you to the Athena. You said that girl, I don't know that who your hairstyle, you, you gotta do better. You know what she did eventually? Did better. But all she heard was you hate her hair. Oh well, but we don't I mean, even know I said, she heard it. I said what I said though. I was, I was never it. listen, and I'm listen. I'll never go back on that because it was a big thing for me because it was just like, yo, you're talented in this ring, but this presentation, baby, ain't it? But all right, let's get into. I mean, it's it goes a little bit more than it being a race issue at the end of the Look, day. Niggas just don't like me. <laughs> yeah, no, that's what it I comes down to. It, yeah. I don't think it's even race. <laughs> uh, niggas just, just don't like they me. Don't, yeah, but a lot of them don't know you not to like you. So no, there's that they too. Don't like me. That is it. That is what it all comes well, down to. We appreciate those that do appreciate. You know the crazy us. thing about it. You know the crazy <laughs> thing about it. You know crazy? All the friends love him. All the fans love him because they hold love on. the reaction. Wait, wait, hold on, wait, hold on, hold on. They, like the they all love him. They don't like me, but all the wrestlers. I don't know who don't like me. you. Yeah, the wrestlers love you. They love me. They hate me. <laughs> but the fans Imagine don't fuck don't with me wrestler. like that. No. Cause they act like I ruined the sport. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga infiltrated the system. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Russell was kiki with me and everything like that. But the fans. Hey y'all. Hey, how you guys doing? What the fuck, nigga? Like Miss Mac not fucking here. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What? I wish a couple <laughs> niggas in the back of head before for doing that dumb shit. At the end of the day, guys, let's talk about this week in wrestling because we because have... the Rock has come back to whoop Cody Rhodes. No that nigga beat his ass. No. So first of all, six so, minutes, six minutes of beating his ass. 
It was six minutes. Six minutes. Michael had watched it because he had fell asleep. Because you know he, he had him like this in the rain. That's like disrespectful, this. yo. Dang, son. That shit is Shut wild. Up. Shut up. Shut the fuck up. And on top of it, he had him talking f- like this. Yo, he yeah. he gave him he gave him I fuck your bitch. I fuck your bitch. Right there, right there, look. That's the right that's the I fuck your bitch look. That's how I fuck your bitch look. That's how I choked the missionary. That's like that. That's wicked. That's wicked. This shit is so hard. That shit, yo. And you know what the crazy part is? Oh. Thank you, Christian Bailey. Thank you. Shout out to Christian Bailey in the building. Thank you so much for your love and your continuous support, my my brother in wrestling. I appreciate you. The craziest thing is that had it not been raining, that whole scene would have wouldn't have hit the same. No, of course that, that that's was, the wildest that was God part. Intervention, God, dude. nature, Mother Nature played a major part in that whole segment because, baby, had it not looked like you got served <laughs> in TV in live color, that segment would have not hit so, the same. At I, all. He got the belt. He said, smell it. Yeah. Smell it. Well, that's smell He put like. his blood on. I yeah. said, Woo! Woo! Yo, Woo! but <laughs> we did Woo! see when Cody had ducked off, we did know he was blading himself, but it's okay, Cody. We, we wasn't going to out you then, but we knew. But <laughs> So, <laughs> so, two things. No, so he didn't spit on him, but he did, he had a perfect spit. Shout out to Dwayne, though. It was a very perfect, like, it mm. wasn't far, but it was close enough that it was, like, serious. So yeah. I, whoo, so, okay. Everybody's talking about that Cena and um Stone Yo, Cold I didn't even look the at that. Yo. <sighs> now. I hate the internet, bro. Like, I, this I'm is the one say- time I wish. So even like when Sean Ross Sapp has said what, what Dwayne has said to Cole when he whispers, I'm just like, I didn't want to know that. I didn't care. Him? I'm make you bleed. I was like, I didn't want to know that. No, it's, it's pretty dope, though. Like, no, I would. When, when you beat somebody up, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make you bleed. No, so he said that's what he said. Uh, so they was reporting that he he told Cody he whispered to Cody, "I'll make you bleed." So that's why when you fast forward to when Cody had the segment, the interview question when she said, "Oh, what did he say to you?" And then he was just like, "Don't worry about it. It's not like he gonna hold up the end of the bargain." But then he did. But you didn't know. But I would have rather not know okay. that part. So this is what I'm gonna say. Cody write a passage. Oh my god. So this is what I'm gonna say. We saw that Cena and that Austin thing, right? I'm so in the back on the truck. Yeah, on the truck. I was talking to my man at work. Shout out to my man's at work. Just some Avengers he, he, shit he, about he, to go he, down. The only wrestling fan. Yeah. And me and him is chopping it up. He's like, we gotta overbook WrestleMania. <laughs> and I mean, I'm telling, I'm saying this right now. I need. Every superstar the from the Avengers. last 10 years to come out night to one, help Cody. Night one is going to be the Avengers of WWE what? of the last My 40 years. Like, okay, five, 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 five. Legit. Let me ask you a question, right? In the last 10 years, next bookings, okay? Next bookings. Who have Roman Reigns betrayed? That he's fucked the, over? Wait, wait, wait. Roman Reigns have betrayed. Also, it's including his time in the bloodline. So when he beat Cena... So Cena already got low-key beef with him on that. But was he bloodline? Yes. Yes. Because okay. okay. that was the SummerSlam match. So okay. I throw Steve Austin in there because he has beef with The Rock from, from years from, ago. Yeah, they always got he that. Because he beat him. Because he beat him the yeah. last year. At the last the WrestleMania. Last, the last That's WrestleMania. two right so there. Two. That's two. Okay. We have Kevin Owens. Randall still on the, we on have the docket. Rand, we, have, we have Randy Orton. Mm-hmm. Who um, else has the bloodline screwed over? AJ Styles. Yes, AJ. A- AJ Styles. Oh, AJ, no, no, no. LA Knight, but they got um, their own um, match, AJ so we're going to lead them. Right yeah, okay, no, so, we got so LA Knight, we can, LA Knight can come, come out after this match. <laughs> after he beats him. Um, oh, yeah, Solo beat him at, at Saudi. Yeah, right. So there's so many old ways you can overbook this. It's I'm not. I'm telling you, it's the gonna Avengers be, because remember is going the last to align. The, the match on night two is bloodline rules, remember? Yeah. Or tribal rules, what is it? Is anything goes. And yeah. so so the thing is, it's so they have rules. so they had the tag team yes. match. And if once again the bloodline wins, then it's bloodline rules for night two. Yes. So, but if the bloodline does not win night one, then Cody gets Roman one on one, no yeah. interruption, no nothing. And I think that's why we're gonna get the Avengers of but, WrestleMania but, on night one. But yes. if you had noticed, <laughs> if you wild. had noticed, Just if you disgusting. had noticed on SmackDown, this is real foreshadowing because SmackDown. He said, yo, I thought you came alone. You thought I would trust you? Came out with his man. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So, so, That's so, what I'm saying. Either way, no. so, either way, bloodline rules or not, nobody will keep the no. end of the bargain. Yo, so but let me explain. So I'm glad you just brought that up because it reminded me what I did want to bring to the table this week. So I have a coworker of mine, and he's very, he's he's very casual in that sense. 
And the only reason why he's been talking about wrestling is because of Dwayne. So I give Dwayne all the kudos and bringing the casual fans from the 90s back into the fold. So I come into work Monday and this nigga busts through my office door and says, yo, I watched SmackDown on Friday. It was lit. I said, yeah. you fake ass fan. Don't come up in my office talking about I watched SmackDown. But the one thing you know he talked about was Cody and the presentation of how he looked. And, and I thought those two things. What did he say? He said, yo, I fucked. He said, yo, I fuck with the guy in the blonde hair because he came out looking swaggy and he came out and he said what he said and he had backup and all that stuff. And I was just like. This is how Cody Rose is the face of the company yes. and how Cody Rose will bring in those casual fans that, you know, will pit, pit, pop, they, they'll pick and choose when they want to pop in. But they, he will also bring in fans that that gravitates to the look. He was like, yo, he just presentation of Cody alone. He but was, that's what I was been, sucked. But in. I've, been said, wow. that, I've been saying that I've been saying that for, for so long. That's what AEW had the issue with. You can't come out in just regular sneakers that, if unless you fly. Yeah. You fly as fuck. Like the for instance, the bloodline, they're all sneakers is looking fresh. They look fresh. They look like they're, like they're about to track you know, suits and all. Track suits and all. They look great. Mm -hmm. But you cannot you cannot look like you rolled out of but bed. Backtrack. This all goes back to what I said earlier. Is WWE been around forever? If you look at the um the previous owner was Vince McMahon, he was a stickler of presentation. These are stuff just him as a person that he's stickling for. No, I so love now, it. So I love it too. So now with Tony Khan is Tony Khan not stickler because he's not a guy that who dresses all fancy stuff like that. <laughs> and even like the EVPs, all they do is get fly sneakers and say that, yo, I'm fly. You feel me? If you notice. Oh, and they had the bum ass robes this week on Dynamite. Right. Like, what the fuck right, is right, that? Right. If y'all notice, was Cody was fly. The Young Bucks, Kenny Omega, look like bumps. So I'm I'm so I'm 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 gonna go I'm gonna go even further. Look look at NXT. Look at because they're the niggas. The niggas can be in the most dangerous parking lot of of the of America and still look fly. Like look at Obi Femi coming out looking. He don't even got to be in a suit and how he come out. Yeah, because that's that matters because you have to look good. You have to see their skin or the black people's skin on NXT because because presentation because presentation makes you look like a superstar. Even even the even the half white half black babies. Yeah, and then and then when you look at it, when you look at it, for instance, that presentation has Trick Williams. And Carmelo Hayes main eventing, main eventing, stand and deliver stand WrestleMania no titles, but for no Pride. title because they presented it. They presented like mega superstar. That presentation, I'm glad you brought it up. Let's talk about it real quick. That presentation alone, I said this match should really be on WrestleMania. That's how and big don't forget, I felt and the don't presentation. Forget, Carmelo was. Hayes had that uh, had that idea ever since back in the day. Him and his group, remember his group. They all look swaggy. Mm, shout out to, 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 to the culture. The culture. There was the culture. culture. Yeah. I can't remember. Yeah, what because it was. you need you need Christian that, Casanova. You, you need you need that you need to look good. Like I didn't even know. That's what I'm saying. I didn't even know Trick was from like from Philly. So no. when so when the so the cause they said it was a, so when NXT started this week, they was like, yo, they already set you up. They was like, yo, a three part series. Wait, on, NXT's what time is it Saturday? Sat noon, twelve o'clock. Twelve o'clock at Wells Fargo Center I'm um, in Philly. Um, I WrestleMania I weekend. I know. Yeah, that's the time we starting to head to Philly. So I'm upset alone. But no, they already when NXT came on this week, they already had said they said, "Yo, it's gonna be a three part series in the focus point of Trick and Mellow." And I was just like, "All right, I'm strapped in. I'm here for it." So then the first part, and this is where WWE like shout out to Shawn Michaels and, and all that they're doing at NXT, just because the fact that they were able to get other superstars to talk about the buildup is where I got hooked in. The fact that they had your man Philip Brooks talking about brotherhood, I said, oh the shit, nerve. this nigga is trying to redeem himself on all cylinders. Because he was like, yo, I would know a thing or two about brotherhood. And I was sitting here like, oh yo, my no, god. But I feel like, like, look, if you go back and watch it, I think that was his redemption. I feel like that was his low-key apology. He's, on the low, he's trying to he's trying he's trying to make he's that, trying to right them wrongs and, and I could appreciate that, but it was like him, it was Garget they had Gargano and um Ciampa and they had their rivalry, and that was like one of the biggest rivals in NXT. So I saw that happen. I was like, Oh shit. No, they're, they're and then they had Randall, and he, you know, he know a thing or two about brotherhood and about you know rivalry with your brother, him and Triple H and you know, evolution and all that stuff. So I just felt like they 
strategically had placed and produced such a well built up video package so that night. I said, I oh, I said, y'all got really it. really appreciate what they're doing because I don't think people are really giving Sean his flowers when no, it comes to NXT. Not to NXT, no. So and should. there's been eras of NXT. We look at NXT when it was just a just performance. Just baby. It, no, 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 no. Let me backtrack. You got the game show. No, no, no. Yeah, the game show of NXT. But that's what I'm saying. Like, it wasn't taken seriously. No. Then we had Black and Gold, which was like, let's keep it a buck. It was AEW before AEW. Yeah. yeah. It was about great yeah. matches, a couple yeah. of little storylines, but what about yeah. phenomenal matches. When it got on the network, yeah. Yeah. No, no. Yeah, because that was the whole. The network era. Because that yeah. was the time period. Because when they had like the Sami Zayn and and, and and um and Nakamura, they had Sasha. Or, uh, yeah, they had Sasha. So, so a lot of it. What I'm and then you had the Bright Era, when when two point oh two point oh when fire era. Vince fire. Vince was no, it wasn't. It was. It you wasn't. just didn't like it. It so, was. What they've well, done it. now, you know, Hayes, he came from that. Braun Breaker, came no, no, from but that. no, but talk about it. What they've done is combined NXT Black and Gold. And NXT 2.0 and made it a, a very beautiful Strong baby. brand because now it's being uh, is being done like a legit third brand. And I love the fact that even if you it's a small for me it's the details always. So like even when you watch SmackDown and Raw, they always in some form or fashion tell you about what's about to happen on NXT Tuesday night. So like when I was watching Raw, I already knew that we were getting Josh Briggs versus Dijak. I mean Dijak versus Sean Spears, and I was like, oh shit. So then when they opened NXT and they went almost 20, 25 minutes, I, I didn't bat an eye. I said, oh, I know what I'm locked in for. And that's how you kind of connect your shows because, and that's the lack sometimes AEW has with wanting you to watch Rampage. It's just like, yeah, you. it's one thing to run off a whole bunch of matches that's happening on your show, but it's one thing to kind of put little pieces of it in your show to make you want to watch the next show. Exactly. So. I mean, I, I just NXT is just on a it's on a whole nother I level, mean, and I love it. This goes back to what I said earlier: is your company has to grow eventually, uh -huh. and NXT didn't happen overnight because everybody who hate 2.0 is literally the same characters, right? Like all they did was all just of them. like literally, literally, all of them. like. Um, 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 Ash Legend, y'all be lusting over. She was Lash was Lash. Over. And right. y'all was, was talking wild. Y'all was popping mad shit about her in the beginning, which, you know, once again, it's fair because she was in the very beginning. Right. But I lo look at Metaphor. Metaphor hosting NXT. They're oh, one Lord. of the hottest um, factions in NXT hosting Stand and Deliver. And I think remember it's my, dope. Um, my nigga Saucy Santana used to be in NXT for a little bit? <laughs> yes. My nigga Saucy was there too. <laughs> you had mad diverse characters. All they did was just kind of tone down like the whole like vignettes they tone it down with the same exact problem no it's i feel like it's the same i don't feel like that i feel like if anything production level turned all the way no, up. no what i mean by that how that they have less sillier gimmicks okay everything yes, because even even though everyone's hyped for the mellow trick main event don't be distracted by the fact that how they not they how they've been building Ilya Dragunov versus Tony D'Angelo because it, it is they're having a dinner at this like secret on, society man. place and it gives that very monster feel which is Tony D's lane and what he's always been about and how he started out NXT 2.0 yep. chase you NXT 2.0 yep. and I and I get that. But now we got the perfect combination Thank of you, black and gold and NXT 2.0. Because Vince is not there. Bruce Pritchard is not there. It's literally, it feels like you're watching a whole nother federation. Well, the so we the reason why this is working now. Oh, someone said that y'all from BK? You're from all over. Uh, yeah. From well, Queens, from baby. Queen, well, they Queens, from Queens. Get this I'm money. from Brooklyn. Dollar, dollar do bill, y'all. So anyways, so... <laughs> The reason why this has been working as from? of late, how are you asking us? Where are you is from? because Triple H and Shawn Michaels are not that far removed from the business. That is why it's working, mm -hmm. and they're willing to listen to the younger people and look to see what's going on. We, every company has it. When your CEO gets to a certain age, oh, shout out to the views from the six in the building. Shout out to Toronto, like. When you start getting to another, when you start getting to that higher level, higher level, you lose, you lose, you, 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 you're, that not, touch. you're not on the pulse anymore. You're not, you. and you not, you don't know what people are looking for. You don't know what, what the people on the outside are talking about. And, and you're so, so you gotta, far removed from yeah. the culture that, that, that you don't see what's going on. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes just like Tony, Vince was the same way. And I, and I love Vince. I, I, outside of his d disgusting things that he has done. 
when it comes to him, what he's done for, for wrestling, the business, the business, he's done a lot. Cannot take but there was times he was far, okay. he was too far removed. Yeah, from the business, and and the reason why we're seeing such this. They call it the Renaissance era now. Yeah, the that's what Izzy said. Shout out to Izzy. So, so, so why they call it the re this Renaissance in professional wrestling, especially in WWE, is because the people running it, including Tony, are younger. So they have a they have a, they have They're a better a bit, understanding yeah, of what's going the, on. Touch to and the people. This is kind of similar when Adam Silver from the NBA took over, because once oh. Adam Silver took over. NBA went from like how narrow like players could talk to the commission and stuff like that. It became very player friendly. It became more of a better better environment. Bec the world is changing. It wasn't changing yeah. because, for example, is certain stuff that promoters are facing now they're not facing what they faced back in the day. Is even as a local promoter, is back in the day you didn't have social media. Is yo you put your, 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 your you got to put them flyers yeah, out on the, the flyers streets out there. You got to go to bars. I talk to everybody now is. Ah, right, let's get a crew of 20 people that's supposed to online, blah, 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 blah. Let's get a couple of people going to each wrestling show. You can pay for people. You right, can pay for promotion right, now. Right, before you can do that. It's, it's way differently. Uh -huh. So this is why I give them credit because, like you said, I just retired not too long ago. You feel me? And even with Shawn Michaels, I was ahead of the game because I was the, the I was the template for a lot of these crews to where you are right now. A lot of these champions will come and credit me and say that, yo, because of you, I'm a wrestler. Yeah. You feel Cause Sean, Sean, I mean, even though you know he had his demons, he was the full package. Yeah, he, he was the entertainer side. He was the wrestling side. He he had the full package. So a lot. It's good to see a lot of. I think of what I feel like he couldn't really succeed at doing during his time right. for whatever the reasons are. He's he's pouring that into the business back into NXT, and, he and I think everything. that's a beautiful thing in wrestling. I'll give you an example. You have. Back in the day, is Shawn Michaels been through having a tag team partner that never, never really lived up his full potential because of his own antics. Shawn Michaels been that guy where, like, top of the mountain, had everyone going for me, but I was my own worst enemy. Mm -hmm. He was faithless. That was Shawn Michaels. Triple H was the guy where, like, yo, I was the friend that did everything right, that did no drugs, did everything. And but I, yet still, I had to suffer because everyone suffer. else left the company yeah. and I had to take a lot of the blame. I got my push derailed. Because of other people, they understand on a human level. Triple H understand that being a wrestler to now who he is right now. Now having now, don't forget all his stuff he dealt with his with his um his father in law, his ex girlfriend China, stuff like that. Real life situation that he been through. I've been through the bad guy. I've been that dude. Oh, sure, sure. All yeah. of they all been he through was that. Out here so what? So. so like. So like so 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 what's better advice that who can run a company is these these two guys that who literally was the janitor to now running shit. But, but that's it's, that's it's, the beauty of it because think about it when like just professionally when you're kind of at that bottom and you work your way up and that's why it's always good in that sense to promote within because they already know the ins and outs of the company. So somebody asks, is it changing for the better though? So this is what this is what it is. Change is constant. Yeah. You either fall behind or you move forward. So what a lot of people don't know is, and this might be some bullshit he was saying because he had to get his money, but when Vince, quote unquote, sold the company to TKO, he felt the company got stagnant. He felt WWE wasn't, wasn't growing. Uh -huh. And he was right. But he didn't know how to grow the he company didn't know how to move it. because we're in a different era and they're not familiar with He's not completely familiar. You're a multi, you're a billionaire. You live alone. You, you, you don't really go out except, except when you do your wrestling stuff. So you don't understand what's going on. Mm -hmm. The people around you, John, John Laronitis, for instance, are creeps, don't really understand what's going on. Kevin Dunn doesn't know that doesn't hasn't updated his stuff, which is why you see the presentation of Raw SmackDown completely different Nigga, now. From the camera but angles. Bro. It's the fact that we have to understand is that is change thing, things changing better? Yes. Absolutely. If you're changing over time, that means you're getting better. It huh. may not be perfect, but you're adapting to the current climate. That's And the thing about what people, a lot of people don't talk about is WWE was one of the first people to do NIL. Mm -hmm. WWE was one of the first people to, to look into to see what athletes from other sports are doing to potentially bring them on. We look at Bianca Belair, which is a prime example of a former athlete now being in, in WWE and, and, and striving Fun for fact, better. Now, the NFL is getting rugby guys 
to see if it could translate to the NFL. But that's but yes, because that's what you do. That's what that's how you maneuver. You or, have to change. Or look at um the um the XFL um combining with the other um spring CFL. league, yeah, becoming the UFL thing. And that's a, you know, and that's been a kind of a of a building ground for those that want to get back into the NFL. There were people that were playing XFL last season that ended up getting signed from NFL teams. So it's all about oh, just presentation and things of that way, nature. What? The NFL changed their whole kickoff. Kick, kickoff because of NFL. Because, because of XFL. XFL. Because you. of XFL, yeah. So, I mean, once again, I think what, what it comes down to, and we'll talk about some predictions for WrestleMania, so I need you to get some some flyer cards together or get them on standby. But know. the thing about it, I think at the end of the day, is people are not always receptive to change. And I think once you kind of get past not you know not being receptive of it and and seeing that the growth and change kind of kind of work hand in hand then that's when you'll see everything kind of progressing in the way that it has for this this whole build up for WrestleMania alone has Different. been honestly one of the craziest rides i think us as fans have been on in a very long time and it's just you know and and it's a beautiful thing because it it'll it'll be one of those WrestleManias that we will remember of all time, you know, like you have people that were at WrestleMania one, two, three, four, and they have and those are them. Edge always talks about him sitting in sitting at WrestleMania when it was when it was in Toronto. He always talks about that. You have kids today that will go to their first WrestleMania next Saturday and Sunday night and tell their kids like, yo, I went to the hottest WrestleMania. And people there was. and because of that is. Everything around you grows. If you do not grow what's going on with you, you're going to be left behind. like food. Look at us. When we first started, <laughs> right? I'll give you the greatest example. What's her name? The referee, the female one. Asa? Aja. Aja. When we first met Aja, fun fact, she was a wrestler. Yeah. When I say Aja got busy in the ring, yeah. son, none of these girls couldn't hold her in the ring, son. She got busy. Yeah. Her, nice. I Nice girl. But now you'll never know that because she changed into the referee. Change was needed. So what I'm saying this is like we all go through changes for positive things. Yes. Yeah. But what but the one thing about it, I know is that a lot of fans don't want to move with the times. No, because some people like to end, but that's like that's fans of any type of sport. You see what I'm saying? Like it could it could be applied to basketball, it could apply to baseball, it could be applied to football, any type of sporting type of situation. If you've been a fan of it for 40 years, you kind of stuck in the ways. You kind of stuck in what where it's look at. Us, look at us, look at us with football. That's what I'm saying. Yo, when I used to watch football, son, the scores was a lot a, a, like it was very like in Niggas the 20s, was out here blowing out 30, 30 35 the most, to 40. The most, the most. Now 60. I like 50, the fact that YouTube. that the YouTube Super Bowl faster. was under 25 yeah. points on each side because yeah. it, it gave it made it more like of a of a competition. Yeah, but it's faster. Stuff but like to that. um, so all right, we're gonna get some to some predictions when Sir Ruckus kind of comes back. Um, to my to my Toronto brother has said he wished WrestleMania goes back to one night. Listen, this is my eighth, and this is I think it's my third two day. Just like Rob Wayne, 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 baby, Wayne. you I do not want WrestleMania to ever go back to one day. Hell no. That is way too much. It is so much easier to digest. You can select which day you want to go to. It's more flexible. It's more entertaining that way. Like just and I've experienced it. So like ex I've experienced both sides. So I mm, I, I prefer the two nights. It's a I've lot easier. Nights on too, the, uh, it's a lot easier to digest. I like I'm not example. sitting in a stadium for ten hours. I'm only sitting in it for like three and a half. I'll give you an example. The most famous one when Kofi won the championship. Mm -hmm. After that, I want to go home. Oh, well, yeah. Like when Kofi you won. You know what's crazy? That WrestleMania Loki should have been two nights. The way that, especially because the women had main event it and it was Kofi Mania and stuff like that. Had that been two nights, I think that would have been a very different yeah. and very interesting WrestleMania weekend. Because when Kofi won, every, I swear, everybody checked out. Everybody was like, oh, everybody, everybody checked was out. so dread. Because think about it from opening bell to closing bell. We you, was invested like this. You want to come in and close the door? We was invested like this. Oh my God, what are you going to happen? What are you going to so, do? So, Tilly's point about star power, um, um, I, I disagree again. Yeah, this mass Um, star. There's, you know, the, when we were in star. Dallas, Austin came out both nights. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, So, the first night, you already knew he was coming out. The second night was the surprise. So, he was like, oh shit. And then, once again, they still have not given which matches. Are, uh, we only know the main events 
for both nights. So we don't know what other matches are going to be on what days as of yet. They're probably slowly announced that this coming week. Um, but all right, let's get into some predictions because once again, we probably most likely will not be recording next week because we'll be deep into WrestleMania stuff and life and the pursuit of happiness. So we want to give you guys some predictions while we are here um uh, for the last few minutes of the episode. See? Um, so we do so as I mentioned, we do know that once again, Seth Rollins and Cody Rhodes versus Dwayne the Rock Johnson. And, yeah, they're gonna win and Roman Reigns. I don't know. That's, they're gonna win. I don't let's, know. Let's, let's, let's just keep it above. I don't know. But um, the tag team, the hottest tag team match of all so, time. So hold on, hold on, hold on. Time out. Cause, cause I just got confused. <laughs> How you get confused? Cody's guaranteed the match on the second. Night. Yes, correct. Yeah, because okay. he won the Royal Rumble. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. And sure. that was why when he said in his promo, he was just like, "Well, I think it was on Monday. I think when he was said like, oh, Dwayne just mad because I was the one that that didn't give him the match yeah. he wanted.' Type so, of shit. That was why. So Bloodline wins. I don't know because I, 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 because listen, the conspiracy. Cody taking the pin. Cause so I don't see Cody. Cody taking, the, taking pin. the pin from Dwayne. I don't see Cody taking the pin. If anything, Dwayne don't lose in his movies. You think he'll lose in real? In he wrestling? definitely losing his movies in fights. No, he doesn't. Look back at it. Listen, what was that? What was the movie where he got he got fucked up first, but then he came back? What, what was that? Walking tall. Yeah, walking yes, tall. That's the but he came but back he, and won. But like a wrestling match, <laughs> the heel got get the heat. I am listen, bloodline pro. Yeah, he definitely is. Um, I don't know if they listen. If we listen, I told Michael. I said we get off. I said if you hit that glass shake on that first night, <laughs> shit is gonna be critical. But, but what if you hear? Uh, what if you hear the um the club the and club. a bunch of the Bullet Club come out? I would be confused. Yo, bro, I'm not gonna hold it's about you on to that. be the most overbooked mania ever, <laughs> and I'm all for it. All right, so that's Next the main night. event. Um, we do have. Well, come, you pull up a random one. I don't care. Um, woo, brother versus brother. Their Jay, dream match. Jay's winning. Jay oh, Uso that. will probably take that W. Listen, fifty, sixty thousand people are gonna bop to this man, and and I tell you, when you're in that space, it is it it fe- it's a different type of feel. Like I'm I'm so proud out of all of the things to see the growth of Jay Uso in this whole situation. Like the, the shit is just like wow. But I did question where Jay was at on Monday after you know after everything had got cut. I don't I don't know if he what? didn't understand. So it was brawling. No, he he was standing in the ring, and then the camera had cut to the back. Yeah, they're still brawling. He wasn't fighting anyone in the ring. But 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 he but, wasn't fighting but anyone. Again, stop stop overthink wrestling. No, I'm just saying that's seen what's done. I'm just saying. But like, if he's you know supposed to be Cody's man's, you know where would you at, my guy? Rakishi is at WrestleCon, so Rakishi might pop up. Special guest referee. Um, what else we got going on? They need to overbook this. Shit. I want everybody of my childhood in there. All right, night two. Drew McIntyre. Um, Drew McIntyre, I think will win, but yeah, will Drew. someone cash in? Is the question. No, Drew's dun win. dun dun. Just so that he could complain about how he won the title for two minutes. <laughs> That's what I think. I think Priest is gonna cash in so that push play the DJ. I like that name. Let the music play. All right, what else we got going on? Um. We got ooh six pack ladder match for the. So I think the Hardys are going to be in this match. So I, I don't, yo, I I, I don't then, need that and again. Jeff, and then Jeff is going to. I don't need that again because let me tell you when that pop in Orlando happened when they came back, that shit was just epic. Um, so we got. I actually think Miz and um. Me too. And um. And Ron going win, low yeah, key. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But somebody else, which I thought was very interesting, um, had said. Is that what if one person? I think oh, it was the guys you met on at BlurCon. Shout out to BlurCon and everybody that came out to see to watch oh, our panel. That was a really the good time last out this year. Week. Um, a video at BlurCon. So put it together? I did. Um, what you would call it? I, so that's the one thing because they got merch on on WWE Shop. Like but they new, had merch. no, they got like new merch because I almost bought t shirts the other day, and when I saw the Dudley shit on there, I was just like, I've never seen the Dudley t shirts on this on this Is front the title face. Is separate? Because MDB, BB Knight. So here's what I, that's what woke culture. So shout out to the guys at woke culture because I do listen to them quite often. Had mentioned that what if one team grabs one set of belts, like one and grabs red and the other one grabs that's blue. Fine. Which actually I'm game for because they definitely I think have worked out a tag team division to where the belts need to be separated. Yeah, now. yeah, yeah. So I they, definitely like like, um, Triple has done a good job. So I definitely think um, 
that but i i would love to see listen any if they can get the dullies and hardies in at the last minute i think that'll be dope um uh, especially because they just had their rivalries yeah, episode Dr. D, we need to be at blur con again. i don't know how you're gonna make this happen <laughs> when was blur con it was in july and i don't i don't know when it is i this saw year. dr d at um i saw dr d at the last wrestling event right mm-hmm. just fun fact the same wrestling event that we sponsored swollen the same that we went to this year with me nick and um yeah 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 so like how that he said that how that he gave me the the the, the old school <sighs> i don't know this year dog yeah because they be giving him a hard time yeah. so listen yeah, 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 yeah. um Oh, it's the week before I go to Miami. All right, we'll I see. They can pull it off. Listen, if if Doc, if you need us, I'm there. But it definitely is the week before I go to Miami, so <laughs> I would prefer not to go anywhere. Um, uh, what other matches we have confirmed? Oh, we have EO versus Bailey. Triple B Bailey. So definitely Bailey's gonna get her Triple WrestleMania B. moment. So that's gonna be really exciting to see. Um, yeah. We also the have is up. Bailey so far. <laughs> wait, 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 wait! Hold on. What? You sure that Jeff contract is? is, is I don't know what the fuck. Listen, I know Matt's contract. And, and, is oh, yeah, Matt's contract is the one that they've been negotiating for some time. So that one is is probably the one that's gonna be up. Everyone's saying Bailey's gonna win. Um, and they kind of find out it was because um Reba's friend had the suite and had wanted to see her, and that's how they ended up at Raw. Okay. See, they um, yeah. See, yeah. No, thick uh, Bailey. We what like thick other? Bailey out here. Yeah, no, I'm not with the hugger Bailey shit. That shit was trash. I didn't want. That I liked all. it. I liked I it. I thought it was. A, I thought it was we a good, have a good thing. Gunther versus Sami Zayn for the Intercontinental Championship. To be real, definitely Sami's gonna probably. I kind of want to Chad, uh, uh, Chad Gable to. No, nah, so I'm here for Chad helping him win and then turning heel. I'm actually okay with that. I'm not. I'm not right because there was a time when Shush was was heels. They was getting. They was getting some heat. So I I definitely think nah, I gotta go with my son for real for real, I gotta go with my son Gunther for because I man. definitely think you know okay. once again we're entering once WrestleMania season ends I, I we're gonna go be Gunther. entering summer time yeah, summer slam. and I d- yeah. definitely don't see him going into that Ooh. season with the belt Gunther because of and in all honesty it's time for Gunther to get in the world title picture and with them going to Germany at the end of August I definitely yes. think. I, yes. I think a title match for the world title would be a, a that simple. bigger he, thing for him than look, still look, look. him still having the IC title. I feel title. like Chad Gable, I've been saying this for years ago, Chad Gable's a summertime champion. <laughs> you feel me? While I see out there with the title, going to swim pools, all that. That's a summertime champion. So who, what's the next one? All right. Next I think we got a one. few more. Ooh, we, I forgot about this. We got Kevin Owens versus Randy Orton versus Logan Paul for the Logan United Paul, States losing. title. I don't know. No, I think it'd be. Wait, did he lose last year? No. His match last I don't year, think he Logan lost. Paul's losing either. Yeah, I don't know. Because my thing is this: is what do any of them have to gain? KO or Randy Orton for winning that belt? Nothing. If if um, and Logan Paul wins, he has more to gain as a character in the ring. When I was going to solidify as a bigger heel. But you know what is interesting? If let's say, for instance, Kevin Owens was to win, I would see him more doing that open challenge situation and maybe possibly putting over a younger talent because you have like the Braun Breaker on SmackDown. You have, um, you know, once I think once but we finish out with duo. this, I he's fi- a new face. No, 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 I get that. But I feel like when we finish this mellow and trick situation, then mellow would really be on SmackDown. So yeah. then that's another person that can be put over you know in that title are. picture. So. But it'll be very interesting to see. Um, what else do we have? Oh, um, Becky Lynch, who oh, just oh okay. Oh no no no, this is my match though. Son, my, my match of the night. Let me Son. tell y'all when they had that scene with the fucking cameras, the co- the body footage. I said, bro, fire, son. Y'all niggas fire, got it son. today. Fire. It son. is a few no one talking about, but I'm excited for it at best. La Knight versus AJ. So it is honestly the battle of two eras of TNA. That niggas did not get to see in TNA that we get to see now. So I'm here for that. That's one thing. I'm that, surprised CNA didn't post on about him. They probably might have. They they probably made closer to the date. That's one thing that I don't like. What like like I feel like LA Knight is that person where no matter where you, you put him on the card, the low card, the mid card, the um the the um the, the, the main event, LA Knight is always gonna put on a show because him versus Cameron Grimes for that money of for the um million dollar million belt. Dollar belt. That belt is like no one else could barely have. Nah, that but title. that storyline was Fire dope. Story yeah, that storyline was dope. Hey, nightmare that high. Yeah. <laughs> so no, I think it's a match that definitely is underrated and people aren't talking about. But I definitely am excited about Ellie Knight versus AJ Styles. Um, what else? I feel like we we definitely have another women's match. 
Yes, we do. Uh, we have Becky Lynch versus Rhea Ripley for I think, the world title. I think Rhea Ripley title. keeps it. I do too. Me too. I think Rhea I do Ripley too. Keeps actually, it. um, for those that were blessed to see Miss Becky for her book signings here in New York and also in DC, um, but make sure to support. She just released her book, her autobiography. Is that the um, audio book? No, I don't really do good with audio books. It made me fall asleep. Like I like a physical book. I kind of like the audio books because like like I like, like the, the guy that right that that gives us the books. Because oh, like, when, like when I when we when we get this when we them. get this apartment apartment like the official tissue tissue then we gonna have when like a whole going? book show, huh? When are you guys moving? Hopefully by the this year, because my lease is up in December. So I told him I was like, listen, you guys going? No, yeah, either still staying in like uh, near where I'm at now or in Queens. Yeah. So because it's easier for oh, them to get to Ozone work. Park. Yeah, like something really yeah. somewhere along the J still. Yeah, is, yeah. Is Ozone Park for by me, the A train stuff like if that. If I'm gonna be honest in that, but um. Are you coming to Newark? I'm not coming to New York, nigga. <laughs> Yo, he was on company. He does, and I, I wish. Let's say if my if if I was single, ready to mingle, I probably would have took him off for that offer. But I have a whole Don't be wrong. It's a different situation. He lives right by all the porn traces. No, stations. it's great. Like all the porn traces. Like literally, I take the like. It's it's actually closer for me go to Delaware from his house. Yes, way closer. Well, you yeah. took the Amtrak, right? The, the Amtrak, or I take the um um I take the China bus. China okay. bus there? What? Yeah, in Newark, probably. What? Yeah. Yo, there's a bus. Because it probably stops. That takes you from Chinatown. There's around the corner. They sell egg rolls. I mean, they sell dumpling. 10 for $4. Mad good. And then you can take that bus. Go all the way to Delaware. I'm not ever taking a China bus to Delaware. I took the China bus to Niagara Falls. I'm never I'm never I took I did I did one of them I did Newark, one of them tours. Newark, I did one of them go tour things, which is like a it's like an Asian based company, like tour company, tour operator company. And that was the one time I went to Niagara Falls. I went no, by myself. I, I am not taking. And a China. Nigga, like, it's too bougie for the China. But listen, oh. we were taking China buses when we were in college, like when when uh, my ex oh, best friend, Yo, when my ex bestie, lift the um. That was the no, China that bus. was the mega bus, baby. Mega love. Bus. But China take... bus doesn't have no air AC. Yeah, they don't. No, 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 no. Why we got China bus? Like the flex bus. Is the flex bus okay, okay? No, but flex ain't still Chinese. No, I'm talking about the Chinese bus where oh, I no, sat I for eight that. hours going to Virginia, going to Hampton uh, University. Uh, Twice a, China, a year, a bus with, a bus. with no air, with no AC, yeah, the shit the goes worst. about a hundred miles per hour. It will get you from point A to yeah. point B. What a China bus is is a is a bus that it's a, it travels from state to state. Yeah, it stops in Chinatown. They New probably York don't have all the credentials, and then it's usually a rundown bus. Yeah, it's, it'll it's make really like cheap. two stops. Yeah, but now it's like now it's like they realize it's big business. So like companies like Flex. Cause Flex Flex has slowly become one of the biggest um companies. You can take the bus down there. Great buses, great AC, but that's the Flex quality bus. Side. I thought buses were going to. China. Wait 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 no no no. There's the quality Flex, but those are quite high AC. And there's and there's Greyhound. Greyhound's the worst. They have the worst drivers. Yeah, everything. I, I've actually but I have to say, when I took the China, movement. I mean, like when I took like the Flex bus from Chinatown to to um to Delaware, that man was fat. He making money on the side too. Like well, he picked yeah. up his man's around the corner for 50 bucks. Yeah, he was like, come, come hop on. Yes. I'm, uh, I'm not taking a track. I'm trying to think, is there any other Amtrak. matches? I thought I'm getting to Philly. How do you think I'm getting to Philly? Amtrak. Well, right $20. Yeah. Main event. The main event, night Cody two. Story, Cody finishes the motherfucking story, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, whether it's bloodline rules or not. He will finish the story because, God damn it, we have not been going to damn. But I thought, oh, I thought, I'm not going to hold you. This is how I knew he was going to win low key on Raw when he told everybody in the crowd to point to the sign. I said, what fucking baby face has ever done that? <laughs> Who's ever done that? Come hop on. No, did <laughs> <laughs> I remember this flyer? Pause. This is old school right here. Yeah. Now they're not together. No. Yeah. But again, very good interview on Chris Van Vliet. Um, oh, if you have not watched it, but um, but once again, um, uh, WrestleMania week, we're on the uh, we're, yes. we're on the outskirts. Hour and a half to, 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 to yes. Oh, well, yeah, that's it, that's it. That's well, it. we ran the no car, stop, so. straight, yeah, straight. Just straight. To Philly? Yeah, straight. There's well, no from you, it's probably no yeah, stop because you yeah, kind no you yeah. hopping on from but Newark. For me, but for no, me, I can talk. So there's two things I can do. I can take the Amtrak. Yeah. Or I can take the New Jersey Trenton. You can yeah. transit to SEPTA and no, then take it to the city. It goes to Trenton. Trenton. And then you take the yeah the SEPTA. How much that was? $20. Yeah. $12,000. Yeah. But we had rented the car for like pennies, low key. So that's why I was kind of glad. All right. Well, we actually going to wrap up the show anyway. Uh, Because, you know, he does boss things, boss things all the time. But, um, no, that actually is probably it for us. Um, Oh, you got baby on the way? 
What? What you just said? You guys would know first. Thank you. No, they, the whole job <laughs> Yo, I, if y'all would have just saw my face, I said, what the fuck? Nigga, I remember no. when I, when I thought that I was going to have a kid. <laughs> you probably still going to be the first one to do it, though, so it's okay. Um, But thank you guys for joining us this lovely morning. This Friday, not breaking news. Jesus Christ. We're going to spread propaganda. <laughs> not up in here. Uh, thank you guys for joining us, for always being a part of the live studio audience. We appreciate you guys every week for joining us. Um, once again, we are on the outskirts. We're in the shadows of WrestleMania week. Um, tonight, SmackDown, live and in color. Jade, y'all been talking about her. Y'all been wanting her to come on. And now she's going to be on tonight on SmackDown. So make sure to tune in for that. And then once again, Monday kicks off WrestleMania week. Um, they have on Peacock, they are releasing the Bray Wyatt documentary on Monday. Um, so Monday, the Raw Go Home show is here in New York, in Brooklyn at Barclays. So if you're going, make sure to have fun. Um, and then um, NXT will be the Go Home show. And then Friday Night SmackDown Live in Philly, followed by the Hall of Fame ceremony. Um, and then night one, next Saturday, April the 6th and night two, April the 7th. Shout out to Danny. It'll be her birthday night, too. So that's my girl, my ace boon coon. It'll be her birthday. So make sure if you see her in Philly, make sure you you pin her a dollar to bless her with her birthday. Um, it's her big 4-0. So make sure to give her some love and support. Uh, but once again, uh, we will be hosting viewing parties in both New York City and in Philadelphia. Uh, for New York City, um, night one will be at Playwright. Uh, so the information is scrolling as you see it. Um, doors open at five shows at 7 PM for both nights. Uh, so night one is at playwright night two is at legends. We'll be ending off at our home base at legends on Sunday, April the 7th. And then once again, on, uh, probably the early part of the week on Monday, we will release the information for the Philadelphia viewing parties as well. So make sure to stay tuned for that. Yeah. Um, stand and deliver 12 o'clock Saturday. you the pre the really the that's the real pre-show, the WrestleMania. Okay. Um, so if you're in the Philadelphia area, make sure to go out and support or watch it on Peacock. Um, also to Thursday night Wally Mania. Um, catch us there. Um, uh, make sure to come out and support um the culture because it'll be live and in color. So that'll be really, you know, it'll be good for the city. Um, and I do want to give a special thanks to Triple H for listening to me about Meek Mill. I appreciate it. Because we all know that that was that just had to happen, okay? Um, we thank everyone for joining us. Shout out to also our good friend in Toronto that popped in. Appreciate that um, views from the six. Um, thank you everyone that has joined us this morning with your comments, questions, oh, and everything like that. Oh shit, nasty Leroy in the building. You ain't know it, Mister Back. Nasty Leroy in the room. Woo -wee! <laughs> that's my man. No diddy. All homo. All diddy. no diddy. No diddy. Man, all diddy. those no nasty. No diddy. No that's diddy. nasty Leroy right there. Uh, but shout out to nasty Leroy right in the building. That's my man. Uh, that's, that's, the, my man. that's the that's the that's one of the number ones in the building. Um, but thank you guys as always for joining us. Um, once again, we will not be here next week. We'll be engulfed in either life or WrestleMania stuff. So catch us for the post Wrestle WrestleMania episode in two weeks. Um, uh, where we talk about all that has happened the week of WrestleMania. But as always, I'm Janelle. But make sure I hear with Sir. Well, I was here with Sir Wilkins and Mr. Black. Hashtag Black Excellence. Hashtag We. Over, got the hands in motion. If you go with rolling, no need to focus. Traveling states and over oceans. You gotta wait till your coast chosen. Trying to have lines outside the show like every part of releases at Bronze and Noble. 